The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Giving a voice to the voiceless, pulling stories out of the shadows and putting them under the spotlight, making sure that each person is valued and cared for. This is Humanity First with Peter Evers, presented by BAMZ. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Humanity First. My name is Peter Evers, and we have a show that we're just going to kick off without uh, me introducing uh, anyone except for Felicia Hayward, who is uh, pretty well known to this podcast. I think this might be the third time. I think it's the third, maybe, yeah. And Felicia, for the last year or so, has been our Executive Vice President of uh, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Welcome, Felicia. Thank you. Thank you very much. And pretty good timing to have a conversation uh, post-election. Um, and I think we both thought it was important to come and talk about what this means for everybody. There are obviously some very split down the middle emotions across America about the outcome. Uh, of the election. And I don't suppose I really want us to talk about the politics of, of what that means, um, because there's a lot of people doing that at the moment. There's a lot of people who are very concerned and worried about what happens next in America. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are thinking that they have prevailed uh, and the way of life will change. It was funny because the other day I was listening to uh, um, the news radio in um, in Boston, eight uh, ten thirty, I think mm -hmm. it is, BZ, and at the end of the at the end of the uh, piece, the, the person said, "Well, I don't know, but it's pretty sure that there'll be a move to the right now." And I thought, "Well, you're a student of the obvious because that's <laughs> exactly what's going to happen, right?" Uh, so I think I think we're here to talk about well, what does that mean? Not just for all of America, but there are. Many people that we serve at BAMSI who um, are going to be really concerned uh, as uh, power changes over to the Republican Party, uh, not just because it's the Republican Party, but because perhaps of some of the things that have been said in the run up to this and the fear that, that exists within the people that we serve. And at BAMSI, of course, we serve about 55,000 people. And many of those people sort of fit into groups that have come under scrutiny and attack um, uh, during the election process by, um, by certain politicians. Um, so let's start there. How, how are we feeling about this result? <laughs> and I know it's a leading question, but, I, but just focusing on where do we go from here as professionals, um, just so that everybody knows Felicia is a uh, licensed independent social worker and has a lot of clinical uh, experience uh, on top of all the other things that you bring to the, to the table. Sure, thank you. So again, thank you for having me today. You know, when I think about where do we go from here, I very easily remove myself from the politics. I, I was thinking about it this morning and just this idea of being the United States of America, like it's right there in the name. And so for me, I think like, how do we get back to being united? How do we reconnect with our own humanity? How do we reconnect with the humanity of others? How do we, now the, the big event is over, right? So the need to pick sides and be standing very firmly in your one position, that's behind us now, the election happened. How can we start to get back to one another as human beings? And, you know, this idea that we are, one of our greatest strengths is that we trust on and rely on one another, right? It's right there in the title, United States. And mm -hmm. so how do we get back to um, that sense of community and being back in community with one another across the great divides? You know, that's sort of, a, it just struck me on the way over, I was driving and I was saying, you know, there's sometimes I think we feel when something like this happens, a sense of um, inability to change the direction of, of, of a country. I mean, I think from people would know that I have sort of human, a humanistic approach to politics, if you like. Uh, and one of the things I was thinking was that maybe some people are feeling a sense of um, inability to manage because it's such a huge thing that has, that has happened. And, the, and a question came to me, and I'm sorry I didn't talk to you about this before, but maybe one of the things that we have to think about is how we create what you're talking about in our own worlds, in our own communities, in our own workplace. 
that's something, you know, we're used to scrapping. I, th I think working in hu human services, and I've said, I've told this story before, but one of my mentors at uh, Dimmock Community Health Center s told me to shut up when I was whining once and said, everything <laughs> you fight for is worth it. You know, Fred Rick Douglas said that, you know, without struggle, there's no progress. Approaching it from that way, we feel we can make a difference. But there's something big going on in Washington that we feel a little, um, well, a little, a lot sort of, um, separated from at the moment. So does that coping mechanism relate to our ability to, to change the things that are in front of us? Or, to, or, or at least to uphold the values and, uh, and the beliefs about every American is important locally? Wow. So I think, hmm, I think that's how we hold on to that value is we um, take this opportunity to take a deep breath, exhale and get back to one person to one person, right? So when I think about the work that we do and the individuals that we serve and support, they tend to be very vulnerable individuals. How do we, in this post conversation about taking sides, how do we get back to you are a person in front of me and if I can make things better for you, then I make things better for all of us, right? How do I return to finding my own sense of self, not in the battle I'm waging politically, but in the difference I'm making for this one person in front of me. Right. And that does anchor us, doesn't it, a little bit in the work that we do. And there's a lot of worrying to be done. I think, you know, I think, I, especially for an organization like us uh, who relies very much on federal funding, you know, I think of our Women, Infants and Children program, which serves about 55,000, sorry, about 25,000 people uh, in our communities of Quincy and, and, and of, uh, of Brockton. That is, believe it or not, people, you might may find this difficult to believe, but it's a discretionary budget item every couple of years with the federal government. The nutrition and feeding of babies is a discretionary budget item. I think we, that's worth pausing on. Why are we choosing that one? I don't know. But you know, one thing comes to mind. Yesterday we had our uh, budget meeting for WIC and there was a question, you know, can we go ahead with this plan given mm -hmm. that there is going to be a new health secretary and people are paying attention i think it's going to be rfk junior uh who has vowed to cut all of these social programs um you know that has an, an influence on the people we serve right and how do we deal with that yeah i think that's the time when we really double down on um bringing forward it's very easy i think if you are not working directly with the people that we support to see them as this monolith to see them as other than human beings trying to do the best for themselves and their families that's where i think as professionals in this field we can continue to find our our juice if you will our our the reason to get up in the morning is to bring forward their humanity so that when people are making the cuts it's a little harder to cut when you see a person and not just a number or a person and not a statistic so I think that there's a real opportunity. I'm, I'm reminded of what the vice president said in her um, concession speech that this particular battle may be over, but the fight continues. And in fact, the fight is more important than ever right now because there are vulnerabilities to our funding. Yeah, yeah, there really are. And it is, but it's always been a fight, mm -hmm. I think. You know, I mean, it's uh, there are lines drawn every few years and you know somebody was talking to me the other day about the 80 the 80 year cycle of of culture and human culture and and that it always ends you know that cycle not humanity <laughs> but that cycle ends um you know with a bang um because you have progress one group has progress and moves the dial and you know obviously i think about uh, george floyd's murder and the progress that has been made and you and i talk a lot about the backlash or or the the regression to the median, I guess mm -hmm. I would take the, the, the politics out of it again, uh, in, in sort of human behavior, you know, when people feel that they're losing the back, they're not losing the level, the playing field's been leveled, but you do feel a sense of loss. And if there's nobody fighting for you, then you can be pulled in different directions. Um, but the one constant in this is this army of people uh, that we work with day in and day out who are dedicated to making sure that we are as equitable as we can be with the populations that we that we provide services for and, and care for. I'm going to say it care for because that, that's what we do. Um, let's talk about a, another particular population that I worry about. And, you know, Bamsi has a really fantastic trans uh, service. Um, and it's something that we've been very proud of. Yeah. 
fact, we uh, had the first um, LGBTQ uh, Pride Day um, in Brockton this year, um, and a lot of our trans community came out and celebrated. That is a population that I'm concerned about because it has been a an issue on the on the uh, campaign trail that is highlighted as something that this new administration is going to get rid of. Yeah. So I do feel like I talk about this a little every time I come on. Um, I do believe that when you look at the amount of legislation that's enacted or put <clears throat> forth um, to, to demonize or to strip rights from a particular group, it really speaks to the progress that's been made. So although I share your concern very deeply, I also am aware that <clears throat> You know, I think there's currently 600 and something pieces of legislation in the last year that were put forth and that that is a sign of how far we've come in affirming the rights of our trans community. And I don't think we swing all the way back. I think it's a, a little bit of a pendulum, but we keep moving forward, I believe, in human progress. So I share that concern and I still think we're better off than we were in the previous generation. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think in legal terms, they call that the Overton window, right? right. That, you, that you that you that you always get pulled back to, towards the towards the middle or whatever that is. Um, we uh, in our society have a tendency to catastrophize. Mm -hmm. We're really good at it. Um, much of our political process is built on this idea of fighting against each other. And we know in in our work, in social work, in clinical work, if you take a if you take the winner out of it. You know, you can go a long way. You know, this this notion that you have to win. This is not true in legal circles. This is not true in political circles. So we have to face the fact that there's a winner and a loser here. Um, but as we and, and both sides do this, right? The both sides say, you know, I'm leaving the country. It's always really funny because people say, I'm leaving the country, and it's such a bizarre response. This sort of flight response. First of all, you can't really unless you have citizenship elsewhere. So mm -hmm. don't be so arrogant to think that you can just go somewhere. <laughs> it, um, and and secondly, you know, um, where, where's the fight? Where, where's where's the fight in you where, in terms of staying and making making things uh, what you see as right? And thirdly, I guess is is it really going to be that bad? Now I do believe there are things that are, are really under attack, but this is an opportunity to regather, to reshape what our thought processes are, and maybe to engage everybody uh, in a conversation about how we, right, going back to what you said before, are united uh, as America. Yeah, I think that um, there is this idea that, you know, we swing back and forth, but we make progress. And the beautiful thing that's outside of politics, that's outside of other things is human progression, right? And so, um, and in our field, we have to believe in human progression. That is the nature of our field. And so looking at this, not as a, oh, the sky is falling, but okay, here we are. Now we can start to dig out. We can start to move forward. And sometimes, quite honestly, getting that kind of deep in the mud gives us the traction we need. Um, so there can be, uh, I hate to sound too Pollyannish, but it, there can be a benefit to being on the losing side, so to speak, which is that it can give you a little more juice to dig in and dig forward and start to sharpen and focus the movement you need to make. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, the difference between um, sliding down ice and kind of like making your way through something. You make a deeper group and you right. have to make your way through a bit. Right. I love that analogy. The other thing that I thought about the other day was um, there, as human beings, we are incredibly um, adaptable mm -hmm. and flexible. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about something that happened in 2008 when we had the Great Recession or whatever we called it. Um, and we were fighting. And, and I was actually uh, working at Taunton State Hospital down the road from here. And... Um, fighting with the unions and the unions were you know dem making demands and we were sort of impact bargaining with them uh and then and then the great recession recession happened and and um uh, deval patrick called everybody into his office and said you know i want nine c cuts which for everybody who's listening it's it, basically it is the executive branch takes millions and millions of dollars back and that's the situation we were in and i know probably triggering a lot of people because it was such an awful time but the unions came back and said <laughs> 
okay, let's do this deal because that because our expectations have changed, uh, the circumstances have changed. It's a great human quality, and our expectations must change, right, for mm -hmm. the next four years, and they must change in terms of what we're going to get, of what we might lose, but also what we might have to fight for. Yeah, and I I think that there is a little of let's not assume that whomever wins whichever political battle makes the greatest difference in the world, right? The the work continues yeah. regardless of who's in right. the White House. Um, and there's a way of looking at what is the work in front of us. It might not be that big policy. It really, I do believe, has to be a little bit of getting down on the human level. One of the things that I think we did fairly well at Banzi was in advance of the election, hold a forum for people to come together. And we were very clear, we were gonna talk about people and not policies, and we're gonna talk about caring and not candidates. I think there's a way to return to that way of thinking where you're looking at building dialogue, you're looking at making connections. It's all toward a vision, but I think part of that shift in our, in our goals might be bringing it back down a little. Right. Right. And looking for commonality, right? Because, you know, when you one of the things that, that some people do is is let's say um, there's this issue of um, Latinas vo uh, voting for Trump. Right. And and on the other hand, there are these campaign rallies that just are awful in terms of what is said about a particular group of people. And then, you know, I hear some people maybe on the left saying, well, uh, they're idiots doing that. Mm -hmm. We miss out a lot, don't we, unless we begin to examine why that's happening and what it is that makes people think that they'll get a better deal uh, from somebody who is, is behaving in a way which doesn't seem to throw a lot of love to that particular population. If we miss that opportunity, we miss a lot, right? Yeah, I think the one of the things I found very interesting in our conversation in the forum that we held was there were people who maybe had different ideas about how to get to a place but what we were able to do in our conversation was to get to the feelings, yeah. right? What are you caring about? What are you fearing? And at the end of the day, all humans care about themselves and being able to make a way for themselves and their families, yeah. right? Yeah. And if there is a way to tap into that beyond the big issues, the big issues are important for our political value. The human issues are important for how we're going to get back to one another. Yeah, I mean, we just we just came from a quality council meeting today when we were talking about big projects that BAMSI are doing. And, and Cheryl uh, in Stoughton said, you know, all, all my people care about is why aren't we paying them more money? And, and you've got to be able to connect those dots. And that's something that didn't happen, I think, in the last administration. For whatever reason, um, you know, people were still paying a lot for groceries. And, you know, those are very real human things. Now, I don't think they're going to be paying any less for groceries in the next four years. In fact, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that that's not going away any anytime soon. And as a democracy, we have a real habit of throwing the bums out uh, mm -hmm. when they don't do what we want. And that really has a wonderful sign of democracy. Uh, so let's see what happens with that. Um, but, you know, ending, I suppose, on an optimistic note, um, there is there's a lot of gnashing of teeth. There's a lot of wringing of hands. There's a lot of depression. But life goes on and our work goes on. And there are inequities in our society that we need to fight against. And always, uh, Jackie Jenton Scott's words to me ring in my ear, which is, this is the work of warriors. This is the work mm -hmm. of people who strongly believe that everybody des deserves a fair deal. That even, that people who are unhoused are residents of Brockton or wherever, and they're not minimized. Um, and that keeps you going, right? Because you know, we talk about being on the right side of history, which is a bit of a tired expression in some ways. But as long as you know that that's what you are uh, dedicating your work to, um, it does give me a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, Ken, I, I love that. And I think it's this idea of, are we tied to campaign slogans and campaign goals? Or are we tied to bettering humanity? Are we tied to making things better for the person in front of us, across the table, across the desk from us? And there's always hope in that, right? So you can lose whatever big battle, right? But if you're continuing to lean into maybe not the big, um, let's talk about borders or let's talk about like those big issues, if we're just looking at, are we helping one another to do better? There's always hope. Yeah. There's always hope. Yeah.
And you see it in the number of people who are entering human services work. They're entering in, in droves, e even though they're not getting paid anything. Not paid anything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but people of color are, are coming in. You look at who's at Bridgewater State University, it looks a very different group than it did even 10 years ago. Um, that army is still is still working and is still doing work every day that is improving people's lives. And I think that's what we have to hold on to. Yeah, and I think, you know, to the extent that we can make it easier for them to do their jobs, great. Yeah. Um, because in the end, we all benefit. Felicia, thank you so much for coming in. I know that this was a difficult conversation for both of us in terms of looking for hope and look, looking for optimism in the future. I think we've carved out a little pathway for that and hopefully people are, are beginning to sort of formulate thoughts about how we, how we progress and how we keep up the work that we're doing. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Felicia. Bye, everybody. <laughs>